Hey guys, David here. I know, this is a very weird, very strange and unusual setup. So welcome to my review of what seems to be the fourth episode of Inhumans and the reason for why it's shot this way while I'm driving down the I-15 freeway in Southern California is because I just haven't had the time to really get in front of my TV and the usual setup with the TV and the camera and the lights and all that stuff and be able to record the review after I watch the episode. So I'm gonna try to do it real quick right here and I really mean real quick because like I said, I am on a freeway and trying to set up this camera and also trying to figure out the proper settings to make sure that you guys can see me. And on top of that, the, the camera's not exactly locked down to like my dashboard or anything like that. So I'm gonna try to be slow and not make any sharp turns because the camera already fell on its side once and I don't want that to happen again. And it might be a little bit jittery and the sound quality is shitty because I don't have my mic with me that I usually record my videos with. So bear with me, but I'm gonna try to make this review rather quick only because I am on the freeway and I need to be paying attention to the road. So in Humans episode four, I don't even remember what it was called. It, I, I, I don't. I seriously, seriously don't. But they might as well call it Reunited because in this episode, we had Medusa and the NASA girl, I'm just gonna call it the NASA girl because I can barely remember her name, trying to track down Black Bolt and who is now taken to this facility uh, along with that Hawaiian guy who's also an inhuman because the dude that was in the helicopter that managed to catch him, uh, they, he, he feels like he can help him by controlling the DNA and whatever. One of the twists in this episode that I just did not really get that I just, I was like, why it just doesn't make any sense is that Maximus is in control of this guy because apparently Maximus is in control of fucking everything even on earth to the point where I'm like why do you even have to go to earth you got people here there's there were some nonsensical shit happening in this episode again still keeping in touch with some bad writing and bad dialogue and bad acting here and there I think now that we're not only on episode four, but I believe this is the halfway mark for Inhumans. I think Inhumans is about eight, eight episodes, and this is episode four. We are halfway through. I don't think there's any way to help Crystal. The actress who plays Crystal, I don't think there's any helping her. I really, really don't. It's sad, but yeah, I just don't see any way to make her performances even better because she's still bad here. I just give up. On top of that, I don't know if it's just me, but, and this might sound a little discriminatory, and I'm sorry if it does. It might sound kind of fucked up, but was it just me, or were all the female characters that were lost and about really, really douchey? Like, they could have made better approaches to the people that they were with, whether it be Crystal with that form guy, Oh, cool. Again, oh god, we're going for that Smallville romance. Jesus Christ. Uh, but on top of that, her and Medusa, they were like being kind of douchey in this episode. Like in, in a way where I'm like, you don't have to be this way. I understand that you're trying to find the people that are part of your family and whatnot and trying to get back home and everything, but you don't have to be an asshole. And they were kind of assholes in this episode. I'm like, why? Black Bolt, I think, could have been an asshole if he was able to talk. But he wasn't. Granted, there was a slight uh, step back with Black Bolt. He just wasn't as charismatic as the other episodes. He was really scowling left to right. Even when he gets rejoined with Medusa at the end of the episode, which is a good step forward in terms of the storytelling. Like, hey, look, we got out of prison. And hey, look, now we have two of our main humans finally reunited, and that's cool. But he never showed any kind of emotion, so I was like, okay. And then Maximus' plan with wanting to go through Terra Genesis again, which I think he almost did at the end, felt a little rinse and repeat. Like, you got rid of the last gen genetic council dude before, now you're doing it again. It's like, okay, how many times can you do this big, like, betrayal thing where you're like, oh no, Maximus is taking over. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. You know, it's very stagnant. It's very, I know I say that word a lot especially recently, but you were kind of rinse and repeating here. We really, really are. And on top of that, like I said, this that was a, a very bad climax here. Sure, it led to some progression in the story when it came to Medusa and Black Bolt reuniting, but the way it's executed is terrible. Like, why is she pointing the gun at him? That dude can eviscerate them with his voice. 
and yet they're pretending that they have all the cards, which in a way they could have made a bluff saying, hey, we have a do so, which she did. She could, she made a bluff there, but she was very stupid about it. She's like, yeah, come bring uh, Mor Mortius, Mor I can't remember his name, but the dude with the mask who, again, could still have potential to be a cool character, especially the way that he was complaining earlier, but I'm starting to get the feeling that much like with everything else, they're going to undermine him. They're going to not use him as well as they could, and that's going to suck. But uh, that climax was terrible. He was just like, go, and then he like pulls the thing, and vapor comes out, and she's just like, oh, okay, I get it. He uses his laser powers. We all go up. I'm like, no. He uses his voice. You all, you know, get turned into a pile of blood and flesh. I don't get it. Can, can, are we not recognizing the obvious here? Now, which is why it was so stupid that she was pointing the gun and she was not being smarter about her bluff. She was terrible about it. Bringing over Mordius and be like, yeah, I'm going to use my power. I'm like, oh, oh, whatever. And I guess if you want to look at it from a darker perspective, Blackpool making sure that they weren't for sure dead or unconscious or put down instead of instead just leaving with a NASA girl and Medusa. It was a very weak ending. Very, very weak. But let's go ahead and try to look at a little bit of the positive, which I will admit it's Karnak. Karnak's uh, little involvement with the potheads, sure, it's laughably bad having the Nathan Drake, Liam Neeson look like, because he does look kind of like Liam Neeson, trailing them all the way to the beach. It was laughable. It was like lifetime movie bad. But more into the, I don't even want to call it a romance. It was more like a flirtation ship quote unquote like I believed it more as a flirtation fling ra flirting fling rather than an actual romance it didn't feel like they were fit, uh, forcing a romance it felt more like they're like hey let's just have fun let's loosen up let me kiss you I was like okay yeah I, I looking at it from that perspective I appreciated that uh, much more especially since we're dealing with a character like Karnak who's very stuck up and very like calculated and be like oh percentage of this percentage of that so it's nice to see that they're going with the angle of having him loosen up all that stuff like I said is for him to smoke the actual weed that he's producing on top of that if I was to give some credit to the casting when they had her stripped down to go into the beach I loved personally loved that she was not exactly a you know Victoria's Secret model like she had this might sound kind of bad but she had like some lab or you know she was a little thickish but I, I like that I find not only do I find that more attractive than the Victoria's Secret models were like showed ribs and shit but it felt more believable it, it, it like I said it added to the legitimacy of this feeling like a fling like uh, being in the moment of the beach especially with a character like Karnak who needs to loosen up and who might end up being one of the humans who end up staying on Earth. Like, I can actually predict uh, Karnak, I can buy into Karnak staying on Earth at the end of this whole thing, as opposed to the other Inhumans. Besides that, I gotta be honest, I really did not find anything all that great in this episode, but at the same time, oh, yeah, if, again, even though she had her moments of douchiness where she was just being a little bit too hard-headed especially when she's like legitimately jacking the NASA girl's shit like her laptop and stuff like that there was that scene where they're having food together and there was just a little layer of charisma not only to the NASA girl but also to the Medusa where she was like find my husband come on focus I, 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 I felt like there was a layer of buddy cop type thing happening there with them so I thought that was actually a little cool I was like okay I could get that I could get behind that but outside of that Nothing really that great about this episode, but at the same time, nothing that really pissed me off tremendously like that first episode did. You know? So, I'm just going to be giving this fourth episode about a 6 out of 10. Just a 6 out of 10. It was okay. Not, not at the level of last week's episode, but still, I consider it better than that premiere two-parter. And again, it might be due to the very short running time. I think this one, minus commercials, was only 40 flat minutes. It's like, damn, that was over before I knew it. And I was like, eh, to a certain extent, I'm kind of grateful. So if you guys have been watching Inhumans, again, all five of you, if you managed to catch that fourth episode, please let me know in the comments what you guys think. Please uh, bear with this style. It's not going to happen frequently. It's just going to happen whenever I don't have time because of life scheduling, you know, things happening, life just pulling you back and forth, and, you know, you have to go and do this shit, and you just, you have to adult. Sometimes you just have to adult. 
And if you aren't an adult already, you'll get to that point eventually, trust me. So have fun while you can. And you can do so by <laughs> hitting the like and share button. And if you are a newcomer to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, you won't regret it. Until next time guys, take care. And that's gotta be pretty much the whole division that makes up the antagonist for this film. Specifically, Jesus playing our main villain here, Neander Wallace. Of course, I'm talking about Jared Little. Always trying to bring on that Jesus complex with the fucking hair and the beard. Whatever. Anyways.